since the birth of the internet, marketing campaigns for sports companies has been shifted from brand-centric to public-centric. The paradigm shift has been touching many social issues by sports companies such as Nike. Nike is the world's most popular and biggest sportswear company and is worth over $100 billion. We analysed hundreds of Nike past campaigns and observed similarities in their storytelling, how they recognise social issues, how they connect the issues of individuals, their path to success and at last their victory. In this video we will unwrap the reasons, responses and review the continued effort of Nike's branding strategy. Now for a brief bit of history in the branding of Nike. Philip Knight and track coach Bill Bowerman founded the company in 1964. The initial company was called Blue Ribbon Sports right up until 1971 when the founders began to focus on the brand itself. One of Nike's first employees thought of the idea to name Nike after the Greek goddess of victory. A local graphics student was paid $35 to create a now globally recognised logo. A simple tick. Nike's first print ad in 1976 didn't even feature the product but relied on an emotional connection with sports. Their first TV commercial was created in 1982 and by 1988 the Just Do It tagline was created, which is now a globally recognised slogan. Runners have taken their sport rather seriously. Once things got a little better organised, people started taking notes, analysing how they ran and how they could run even faster. Today at Nike, we know even more. We developed one of the most sophisticated sport research labs in the world to let us see in detail the peculiarities of style, the dynamics of foot strike. And at Nike, we're putting that knowledge to work, making shoes that actually help athletes to run faster and safer. Why do we go to so much trouble? Well, it may be the 20th century and all that, but there are still people out there who run as if their life depended on it. Nike has successfully adapted its core brand proposition of Just Do It to a variety of diverse cultures around the world. For example, introducing the Nike hijab globally in which was a huge success. First we will take a look into the architecture of the Nike brand. They are known for their premium quality sportswear being technologically advanced and spanning the whole globe. The company's internal culture and values include community and the sponsorship of athletes of various sporting activities with a noble purpose of motivating the audience. Personality traits of the brand include being healthy, having a sporty spirit, being an athlete and always remaining optimistic. Shared values of the company are to be proactive, diverse and to be part of a fitness community for people who love or promote benefits of fitness. Nike has an array of subsidiaries including Converse, Hurley, International and Zodiac Incorporated. Moving on to Nike's corporate vision, the company has stated that this is to remain the most authentic, connected and distinctive brand in the world. We have a, a mission statement that says to bring innovation and inspiration to every athlete in the world and there's an asterisk on the word athlete and a footnote that says if you have a body you're an athlete. Since 1972 Nike has been producing trainers. They have been known to be a game changer within the trainer industry. Nike has explored and created various categories of footwear to name a few Air Max, Air Jordan, Air Force and the Nike Zoom series. On March 26, 1987, a masterpiece was born. The Air Max 1 was designed and manufactured from the mastermind of sneakers, Tinker Hatfield, and was released to the world as a revolution in performance technology. Inspired by the inside-out aesthetics of Paris' Pompidou Centre, it was the first Nike sneaker with the visible airbag and the start of one of the most iconic franchises in the company's history. 30 years on and it's still a staple in any respectable sneakerhead's shoe rack. In the early years of Nike, their paths with NASA crossed and their collaboration was the impetus for the creation of Air Max sneakers. 
sneakers filled with air and make it people nearly fly were a great success for Nike. Truly loud technology declared itself in 1987 during the Nike crisis. This year, designers released a collection of Air Max. Air Max shoes demonstrate technology that without making too much effort explains how it works. In fact, it's just a polyurethane patch filled with inner gas. Simplicity has become a key to the overall design. As a result, the original Nike Air Max sneakers, developed by the legendary master Air Max Stinker Hatfield, derived a formula that allowed Nike to earn billions of dollars in the first decade. Nowadays, Air Max sneakers are sold not only as airfield sneakers, but also as a rather unique and personalized product, as each model is presented in a huge amount of colors. During all these years, Nike has been changing the shape and composition, adjusting to latest trends, and selling to the public a major innovations that have appeared in each subsequent generation of Air Max sneakers. However, the principle of air depreciation providing comfort and development is rooted in the marketing strategy of the whole company. For 32 years of the history of the Air Max line, some silhouettes were remembered less, others more, and others gained the status of cult. Regardless of the popularity, each of them was a desire to break down barriers, to do something that no one else had done before. With the help of Air Max, the brand refers to the past and continues to move into the future. Air Max can be truly called the face of the brand that displays Nike's desire to stand out in the world of sport fashion. Today, the world is simply a sea of fans of Nike Air Max sneakers, for which the company's technology has absolutely nothing to do with sport. Their choice is just a tribute to fashion. This can be called the main success of the brand. People buy sneakers for a huge number of different reasons. And Nike re-releases the old right and wrong Air Max models again and again. The company also reincorporates the classic Air Max technology into new design and even adds Air Max technology to the Nike free sole. As a result, the use of technology by Nike designers is similar to the attitude of the fashion industry to certain recurring trends. They come and go without much reason. Nowadays, Air Max is more about fashion. But that fact attracts sneakerheads even more. I believe that uh, that entire air pack of shoes, including the Air Max, was um, uh, probably pretty pivotal in changing around Nike's uh, sort of uh, direction. This adds show how light, soft and comfort Nike Air shoes are. The Nike Air shoe was designed to be flexible, breathe and fit. Not only the function was important, but also the design of the shoe. The air window around the shoe was designed to look different from other shoes. In this article, they describe different research findings to develop the Nike Air shoe. As you can see, the American College of Sport Medicine finds new methods of improving the flexibility, stability and support. If you look further in depth in this article, the sport and research lab measured the impact on different shoes when the foot strikes the ground. They said the lower the force transmitted through the shoe, the better the cushioning. Nike provides in the running store a get analysis for the customers. But what is a get analysis? Basically it's just an analysis of your feet while you run. Why are they doing this? To prevent the risk of injuries for runners. But how is it made, the Nike Air shoe? They use machines that are custom made to produce the Nike Air. I will simply describe the production process of the Nike Air in the following four steps. First of all, the film of plastic goes into the oven. Secondly, the oven heats plastic air film up. Thirdly, it gets formed into an airbag. And lastly, it pops out of the other end of the machine. How does sport marketing define itself? A report by Sports Marketing Relationship and Antitrust defines sports marketing 
as an activity-based marketing tactic used to accommodate the sports consumer wants and needs through the exchange process. There are two key points that have been identified in sports marketing. The first point being that the products and services are directly aiming to the sports consumer and the second point is the marketing of other consumers in the industrial products and services to the page of sports promotions. The demographic segment of Nike targets the age 11 to 45, focusing largely on teens as the brand aims to build a long-term loyal relationship with the consumer. The second demographic is focused on gender. The large purchasing audience is made by males. However, Nike is heavily invested on targeting to females, as shown by their latest video campaign launch, Dream Crazier. And if you're a girl from Compton, don't just become a tennis player. Become the greatest athlete ever. Yeah, that's more like it. The psychographic segmentation focuses on the consumer's lifestyle, personality, activities and interests. The aim is to attract individuals who take an interest to sports and the gym. The brand wants to associate the individual's lifestyle with the activity, creating uniqueness for the consumer. Nike applies a sports-centric strategy, motivating, inspiring and connecting emotionally all athletes with its products. The way that Nike chooses to evaluate its target market is based on size, reachability, measurability and behaviour variables. The company targets professional athletes and sporty individuals, providing them with specialised and innovative products. Nike, the company who gave us an iconic slogan of just do it. The company who made trainers a collectible items more than shoes. Push generation to work hard and win no matter where you come from or what your color is. The boldness behind the ambiguous slogan helped Nike construct an iconic brand. A brand that embraces a large image system that possesses both a philosophy and a personality. According to Dane Wyden, from the agency who created Nike's Just Do It campaign, said, The resonance of Just Do It, it was completely inevident and unforeseen. People started reading things into much more than sports. The versatility of the slogan not only spoke to physical fitness junkies and athletes, but also rang true with the culture mentality of the Do Something generation. After analyzing different marketing campaigns of Nike in last decade, we have found out similarities, patterns and the objective to stick to one ideology of Nike. First time these patterns were identified by Grim Newell, who is specialized in customer emotional connection. According to him, every piece of Nike advertising follows this 5 step. First Nike ad shows first to the challenge, second in the zone. Third, doubt and suffering. Fourth, rededication and finally victory. Nike branding uses these five steps to universally appeal to men, women and children all over the world and to great effect. Let's take in a great example of Nike's current ad campaign in London. I've had the longest day man. You said you were going to come to me, now you're telling me to come to you. I'm not getting on a cycle. Cycle? That's light work. Man's got to run two miles from ends just to get to training. Serious, bro? <laughs> two miles? Really? I have to run all the way from zone six with my school bag. Oh, you think that's tough? I have to run through Peckham. Wrong with Peckham. Oh, uh, yeah? Well, I gotta fight these ways, man, just to play. This is my multi purpose. That's all funded. Football, tennis, basketball, court. Fighting? You don't know 
the meaning of fighting. I should fight! The whole family! Before I even walk in the ring! That's nothing! In my family! If you're not in first place, and you're considered a failure! I know, man, you're begging it! I got more chance of getting hit by lightning than going pro! It's mud! Are you serious? I've got to get to the biggest game of my life, score a banger, right in the top inch, just to be noticed! She gets to play with other people. Lucky. No one plays ice hockey in London. I have to be my own team. My own opposition. And my own coach. Yeah? Yeah? Well, I have to run to training, coach my own coach, carry my whole team, and I'm best mates. What would the world be? No, no. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Morning. Oh, no! Well, I've got to be my own security card. So, if this goes wrong, I'll break my leg! What? Even when I win, I get a broken nose! Well, if I stop swimming, I'll literally die! It's my struggle, and when it all goes up, I'll be there in the bubble right now, all I want to do is double. And there are plenty of fit with the same pattern in different countries. Going further into 5-step formula, Nike has linked the cultural values and personality of the consumer to address the wider audience. To understand cultural values and related behavior, let's see globally adopted Hofstede model. The Hofstede's culture dimension framework for cross-culture communication describes the effect of society's culture on the values of its member and how these values relate to behavior using a structure derived from a factor analysis. The graph represents the Hofstra insight of United Kingdom's consumer data. Comparing this with Nothing Can Beat London and similar campaigns, we can identify that Nike's marketing campaign directly appeal to the consumer's personal and cultural values. As company is growing along with the rising technological innovation, Nike has a tough competition with companies like Puma, Adidas and Reebok. In terms of revenue, Nike has an advantage of being a global brand. Celebrity endorsement and sports sponsorship to big events have helped Nike to become number one sports company in the world. Over the time, Nike have addressed issues that damaged Nike's brand image, and yet it is standing strong in 21st century. This year, Nike have completed 55 years connecting more than 40 countries all over the world and 70,000 employees. Accepting the fact of technological evolution, it would be interesting to see how Nike can make the same impact just like it did with the Just Do It campaign. He, he was convicted and, um, and sentenced to die by firing squad. And so, which is a little old fashioned, but they uh, so they brought him out, put him in the chair, and before they put, and the firing squad was there, and before they put the um, sack over his head, they asked him if he had any last words, and he said, you yeah, know, let's do it. And I was, I remember when I read that, I was like, that's amazing. I mean, how do you, in face of that much uncertainty, do you, do you push through that, you know?